Hello and welcome back to Will of the Scry. We are jumping into episode 119. We messed up. I knew it would happen eventually, um, but we forgot to actually hit record on the last episode that we had just done. So unfortunately, you guys are going to miss the, the fan service fight. i um, not <laughs> sure that was even anything too appealing anyways, but you know, we're going to, we are going to, we decided we're going to watch we the recap. We got to see Navi get her confidence back and you mm -hmm. saw up, uh coming clutch and looking very scientific and with the tool uh, with the climate notable. tact yeah yeah um but we did decide between the two of us that we'll just rewatch the recap and we'll just kind of talk through it as we go <laughs> but with that being said jumping into 119 i am kirk decam i'm skyrim and this is will of the scry So meanwhile, Nami was engaged in Mortal Kombat, Miss Double Finger. This this was the point that stood out to me the most when she stuck her foot in there to hold her still. That's yeah. a great way to counter a spike woman. Use the spike to your advantage. This is almost like I was almost pretty upset again because <laughs> we were misdirected so many times. By the, the tool itself between being a party function and... There it is, through multiple and buildings, multiple walls. walls are doing a lot of damage. Uh, yeah, to normal to people, sides. right? That's a good point. We are we're, <laughs> to both sides. <laughs> with double finger. Yeah, I mean, that's true, right? Again, these are normal people. Sanji, Zoro, Luffy, these are not normal people, you know? Usopp, this Miss Double Finger girl, like, these are, you gotta think of them as human beings. So, yeah, being smacked into a wall is gonna do damage to you. And then there's this epic line, which Skyrimin talked a little bit about in the, the outro last time from Zoro here. Openly says, I can't defeat you because I can't cut steel. Mm. Think of the mindset of all the other people in this show, right? Where they say, oh, I can't cut steel. There's no way I can beat him. I have to think of some other way. Zoro's mindset is... I can't cut steel, I'll learn to cut steel today. It's the difference between him and any other anime character I've ever seen, to be honest. Mmm, never even scratched by a swordsman. He's always, always like, blocking or parrying. Yeah, I mean, he just, he's made out of steel, right? You know who could cut his ass in two seconds? Mihawk. Uh, Mihawk? Yeah. Better believe it. Oof. I'm trying to think of the other anime with like sword hands. I think it's Zetman. Oh, I don't know. I'm sure there's a lot. The way they do it too is interesting because it's not like he's turning his hand to a sword. It's just that parts of his body that he chooses becomes like steel, sure. you know? Which is an interesting take on it too. Oh, that's his bull stance, Only Geary. So you can see that Zoro is like out maneuvering him. He's more powerful, quote unquote, but he just can't cut steel. If if this was the same guy and he had uh, swords in his hand, he would have been beaten probably by now. Mm. First time in his life, Skyrim. <laughs> right, because the back of a blade isn't sharp. Ooh. So is he? Is it like a projectile, like energy, or like he's just quick? He's slicing it. Yeah, no, he slices it, and yeah, Zoro's misdirecting it, which is kind of what's happening there. Yeah, it's not to say, like, this guy, like, I, I don't want my statement from Ford to come off like he's not powerful. I mean, he is powerful. Like, Zoro would be able to cut these buildings, but, like, a normal person wouldn't. Mr. One can also cut, you know? He's Mr. One for a reason. He's more powerful than Mr. Two and any, anyone above it. 
And you saw how much trouble Sanji had with Mr. Two. It's just that we've come to expect Zoro to be so powerful compared to most people he comes across. And it's usually gimmicks or something that the enemy has to do in order to beat him. Not this time. This guy just outclasses Zoro right now. Oof. It's interesting that he's saying that because he's also talking down on himself for not being able to protect his daughter. I just tied two and two together. He's basically telling Zoro to be a better man and better swordsman than he ever was. Was the daughter his friend? Yeah. That, that was the so girl what that... happened to her again? She, she died after they made the promise that the one of the two of them are going to become the strongest swordsman. And how did she die? It was something random. I forget. I think she fell downstairs or something. But I think there's something bigger at play that hasn't been touched on yet that will be revealed towards the end of the show. I could be wrong, though. <laughs> Ooh. <sighs> so Zoro never eat a fruit. He's just... Really strong. Yeah. He trains all the time. Right. Not a normal person for sure. And Sanji could probably do that too. I mean, you saw him kick up the, the banana gator. Yeah, true. I like this ominous soundtrack. Oof. So he's literally just steel. Mmm. Oof. Remember, that's where his wound was from Mihawk. Mm, I was just thinking that. Oh. Mm. Oh, who does he have in mind? You saw who we thought of? I, I blinked. <laughs> I just saw someone flash by. It was Mihawk. Oh god, look at the way the cuts are from the spinning blade. That's not, that looks atrocious. Cut the pillar right through Zoro, dude. What 
One thing you'll learn about One Piece real soon is that they don't always win. Zoro's <laughs> chest is like Kevlar. That's his childhood sword. Oof, that look. He's not even hearing what he's saying, that's how zen he is right now. He didn't cut it. Cut that though. <laughs> yeah, lots of respect going on in the past few episodes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. There's something about Zoro fights when he has this look in his eyes, dude, that takes your breath away. Like, I, I couldn't even, like, I feel like I wasn't breathing there throughout the whole, like, when the <laughs> birds, like, flew and everything. You just know what happened. Yeah, it was so simple, too. His fights are always quick like that. But that actually, like, rewatching that, I feel like I paid, I was able to grasp that way more than I was as a kid. Mm -hmm. And especially just because I know Zoro more and I know how he, like, picks up on things, like... As a kid, I probably didn't really fully realize, like, when he brushed the leaf like that, 
what that meant with everything he was being told from like his his uh, his mentor when he was a child and everything. And then he immediately cut the stone with just a flick of the wrist and just showing the difference in him understanding like what he's saying is like the rhythm here and how to cut steel. I I just I, I was able to like fully take that in this time where I definitely didn't when I was younger. So that I mean, that's why I was getting so caught up in it. Like I, I feel like I honestly like stopped breathing for a second there. I was like in anticipation, you know. Like I, I knew the end yeah. result, but it was just crazy to me. Yeah, no, it was. Um, I thought he was gonna like leave him for dead, and then we'd see Zoro a few episodes later. So it was. Uh, no, yeah. Cool that they wrapped it up in that one. It was. It was very yeah, much so a. Yeah, we kept steel. Yeah, that story was cool. I'm glad I got a refresher on that because I um, we had watched the part with his friend so long ago that it years, yeah, kind of like out of sight, out of mind for me. So that was a nice. Oh, uh, so important. Sure. Yeah, yeah, just just to recap that one between just the two of us, like <clears throat> it's funny because I'm actually showing a lot of my other friends that are starting now, and I'm like, pay attention to this this scene with Zoro and his. Uh, and his childhood best friend, because I think it adds so much, like, up to who Zoro is, right? Like, one thing that I've really learned about the crew and why I feel like I fall in love with them so much, and Zoro is the biggest person of this, is their own aspirations, ideals, and ambitions are so deeply rooted into other people and not for themselves. And the perfect example of that is when Usopp got so furious when when she said that Luffy was dead with Mar Miss Merry Christmas. Not because Luffy was dead, but because that means she was stepping on his goal of becoming the Pirate King. And then here's another example of that, where Zoro, as a child, always said he wanted to be the greatest swordsman, but it wasn't until he met Kuina, a girl, who would beat his ass all the time, and then saw her break down, if you remember from that episode, um, she broke down because her father told her that she could never become the strongest because she was a girl. And Zora was so offended by that because the only person who had ever beaten him to that point was her. So how could she be saying something like that to him that her being a girl is a weakness when she's still more powerful than him? And then the day she died was his ultimate, I am not becoming the greatest swordsman for me. I'm doing it for her. Because we promised that one of the two of us would make it. And since she's out of the picture, now that promise isn't for him anymore. It's for her. It's moments like that that I find to be so pure with this show that I haven't seen anywhere else. And you're going to see how this expands even further with all of the crewmates. But specifically, I think, with Zoro and how he acts. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my little spiel. <laughs> But it, it all ties into this episode and, and how I, I love things like this, where it's it's a it's just it's one quick episode, but you feel like a lifetime passed on. It was cool that he did it with one sword, too, because he's been using three since he got them, right? Great point. And to this point, he's always felt like he wasn't strong enough if he didn't have all three. Remember? The, what was the fight that he did recently where he was like, he only had two and he was like, I'm not at my full power. This is the most, right. by far the most powerful person he's fought. And he did it with one that just goes to show how much he's really upgraded his understanding of being a swordsman versus just being raw power. To your point, like, he lifted that whole building and you were like, wow, like, he's a superhuman. Yes, he is, but it's one thing to be super strong and it's another thing to understand how something works. And I think that applies to all walks of life, not just this. Good stuff. <laughs> all right. Well, that was a good good, good episode to end. Yeah, um, we've seen all the one v one fights, and obviously now this is the the climaxes. We're about to go see what happens with Crocodile and and the the Poneglyph, Pluton, the King, Miss All Sunday, Vivi. Yeah, I'm hoping to get a glimpse, but I don't know if uh... it's uh, all it shows up later. So I don't know if I'm gonna actually see it. <laughs> all of this is coming together, and I think another important thing to point out here, Skyrimin. All of the, the the Straw Hat crew is cooked. Name a single person that's not on the brink of death right now. Oh, that's true, huh? Um, Sanji, maybe? But he's barely yeah, able to walk. Up. Probably yeah. Sanji and Chopper are in the best shape right now. Yeah, everyone else, including Luffy, are... 
gonna say Karu, but he's beaten up. Yeah. So what's yeah. gonna happen here? I mean, crocodiles. Vivi's. Vivi, not, yep. But she's not a physical player. All right. Thank you for tuning in. This is Will Descry. We'll catch you guys next time as we enter the climax of the climax of One Piece Alabasta arc. Peace.